Hi, I'm Megan with Film School for Marketers, and today we're going to show you how to make a personalized video using motion tracking in After Effects. Okay, so let's jump right into After Effects. Now, I'm going to assume that you know how to open the program and import footage and do the basic tools, so I'm not going to go too much into that. So what we have here is Marcus made a really awesome video, and you can see that the whiteboard that he used tracks with the text that we have, right? So this is what it looks like without it tracking. It doesn't move at all, and it looks lame, obviously, and then it stays up once he drops the whiteboard. So that's no good. Um, so what I did here, and there's a couple ways to do it, but I found that in most cases, and not even in just cases where you're tracking something like a whiteboard, but really in most cases where you're tracking anything, I like to use Mocha, which a lot of people I don't think use, but I'll show you quickly how to do the other ways just in case you ever need them. So if you did want to try it this way, you could right click on your video, go to track and stabilize, and do track camera. And what that's going to do is try to emulate Usually that's more for emulating uh, camera movements than it is for objects within a scene. So if you had movement in your camera and you were trying to make it look like something was sitting on the ground, that would be more what you would use it for, or at least more what I've used it for. Um, another thing you can do is track motion, which is really similar to what we're going to be doing in Mocha, but I don't think it's as accurate and it doesn't give you, uh, if you need corner pins, it, it doesn't really give you that really well. So what we're going to do is use Mocha. So, as you can see here, I've, I've optimized it for Vidyard. Um, and it, this will obviously work for you too if you're just doing your own personalized videos, sending out a couple at a time. But what's really cool with Vidyard is you can package it together and send it to them and they can input a bunch of different names. So if you're sending out a bunch of videos uh, of the same video but to a bunch of different people, then they can put your list of names into their program and it sends out a bunch of videos um, without you having to do anything and it gives that extra touch that people really love. But if you aren't putting it through Vidyard, this is still a nice clean way to do it. So it's really easy. And so let's start off by looking at the footage. So what I really love that Marcus did here was he put these little stars on the board, right? And that makes it really easy to track and it doesn't necessarily have to be four stars or like or anything like that. Really it can be like a sticker in the corner, but what makes this really easy to track is that there are points other than just white on the whiteboard. So if you were just trying to track white pixels on white pixels, it would be really difficult. So having those little stars makes it a lot easier. Like if you've ever seen um, like a behind the scenes for a CG movie and they have that outfit with all the little dots on them, that's that's similar a similar idea to what he's doing here. It's, it gives it tells After Effects, hey this black pixel next to this white pixel, make sure you track that movement versus, hey, track this similarly white pixel to this white pixel. So it's a lot easier and that was really helpful. So what we're gonna do uh, is start off with dragging our footage into a new composition. So I'm just gonna show you how I, I did this. Okay, so we dragged it into a new composition. And what I like to do, because it's not necessary to track the whole thing, as you can see, he drops the whiteboard here. So after this point, there's really no need to track anymore. So we, we can, I'm just gonna do Command Shift D, and that just separates the clip, so this part we don't need. Um, and I'm just gonna hide that so we don't have to look at it right now. So this is the section that we're gonna be tracking. And what's cool is there's not a ton of movement, right? He doesn't move it wildly, it doesn't blur a lot. Even though it's low res, we're still gonna be able to track those points pretty well. So what we're going to do is highlight it, highlight the clip, go to Animation, and Track in Mocha AE. And that's going to pull up Mocha. There she is. And register later or never. Okay. So it may look a little scary if you've never used Mocha before. Don't worry. I have really only explored the surface of it. I think there's a lot of cool things you can do in here, but Mostly I just use it for motion tracking. So here's what I did. So we have this section here that we would like to track, right? So the tool that I use is this little X right here, this little pen tool. What we're gonna do is just draw a section of where you wanna track. So it'll track everything 
in this area. Okay? And you just close that off by going back to where you started. So now you have this area, and if you, if you messed up, if you clicked the wrong place, you can move it around. And you'll see in that top left corner, there's a little preview of where you're tracking. So if you wanted to track exactly on that star, that's where that point would be. Um, but it'll, it'll track everything in that section, so that should be fine. Okay, so once you have your tracking points set up, um, what we're going to do is make sure we're at the beginning of our clip, which we are, but if you weren't, you can go to endpoint, um, which is that, that button right there. So now what we're going to do is track forward. And you have two options here. You can track to the next frame if it's an extremely difficult shot for some reason. Um, you could do that, but mostly we're just going to let it track. So you can see it's going through frame by frame and it's analyzing, okay, this, this corner point, this corner point, this corner point, this corner point are in different areas in every frame. So it's moving with it to make sure that it's got the points that you need um, and it'll give you the data of where those points are through every frame. It's relatively quick. If you have a really long clip that for some reason you need to have um, everything analyzed, um, I, you know, go make a cup of tea or something and come back. But um, it is a good idea also to keep an eye on it if you can, just to make sure it doesn't wildly go out of frame like it's about to. So as we see it coming, Marcus is about to put down the whiteboard. It's going to lose it and I'll go over what we're going to do about that. Okay, so it's done. So you don't have to wait for it to finish. You can just stop it. So next point is to export the tracking data. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us all the points that those that it tracked and it's going to let us copy and paste it into After Effects. So we're going to export that and what there's a couple different options. Um, you can do corner pin stuff, but what I've done is just position scale and rotation. So it'll tell you where those points moved, if they rotated and if they got bigger or smaller. So I'm going to do that and I'm just going to copy that to clipboard and we're going to go back to here. Okay. So obviously we want text on our board, but if we just make a text layer, right? And uh, we just put in our name, right? And just pretend like, we're like, oh, okay, we want it here on the board. Cool. So now we have that transform data from where all the points moved, copy to our clipboard. We could just paste it here and, you know, it'll move with the whiteboard, really cool. But if I wanted to then move, I'm like, oh, I forgot to rotate the text. Uh, what do I, you know, oh, I'll just, I'll just rotate it uh, now and it'll be fine. But then, you know, it only rotates that, that one frame. So you'd have to go in and manually rotate every single frame, which you don't want to do. So we're not going to copy and paste the transform data to the actual text. So what we're going to do is create a null object. And a null object, if you're not familiar, is just something that can help you control other things without um, affecting the original layer. So I use it a lot for transforming stuff because Again, if you, if you want to track something and you need to move the original object later, it's a lot easier. So you have your null object. So what we're going to do is just paste that transform data on there. So if you click U on your keyboard, it brings up all these keyframes. So it tracked literally every frame, which is awesome. So look at all that, all that data there. That's good. And you can see the, um, the values of these points are changing. So over here is not the same position that it was over here. And the scale varies very slightly and the rotation varies. So we have all of our data there, which is nice. Now what we're going to need to do is to parent this to the null. So what that's doing is we're telling this layer to look for this, look for the null layer on what to do in terms of scale, rotation, and position. So now when we play it, what? <laughs> that's your name. It tracks. <laughs> and what obviously we and now when we rotate this and we move it, it'll stay like that position but track where it was tracking. So I'm going to say I'm going to rotate it a little bit more, maybe make it like a little bit bigger. And that looks good. Okay. Now, just for final touches, so you saw when we had the tracker up that it didn't exactly follow the whiteboard all the way down, and that's because 
it's moving pretty fast. So all the pixels that I have been tracking pretty easily throughout the steady, the steady shot of him holding it are blurry. So it can't really follow that and you know, I don't blame it, it's hard. So let's go to where the whiteboard leaves the frame. Now this one, actually this one did pretty well, but what I, I, what I basically do is eyeball it from where we can take it from and then where it goes out. So I'm gonna say here is the last steady frame, but it, it pretty much tracks it to here. I'm gonna get rid of the keyframes after that point. And what we're gonna do is just eyeball it in terms of following it down. So we're just gonna move and rotate it so it basically looks like it's following the whiteboard and we're gonna add a blur to it after so it really sells it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm just being picky. Okay, and once it's off screen, you can leave it. So what we're gonna do is add a motion blur. So what a motion blur does, and it's this little tag right here, as you can see when I hold it down, it says motion blur. So what motion blur does is what objects do in real life to our eyes. So if you move something fast, it looks blurry. So the same thing will happen to your object, whatever you're animating. So if something moves position pretty quickly, it'll look blurry. But in order to see this effect, and you can turn it on and off depending on how you wanna see it, it takes a little bit longer to render motion blur. So if you wanna watch it with it a little bit quicker, you can leave it off, but turning this on will show you what it's gonna look like. So, so turn the motion blur on. So what that's gonna do is see how now it's moving and it's getting blurrier. And this isn't perfect, but you can play around with it. Um, it's getting blurrier when, it, when it's moving. So if we were to turn that off again, it's not blurry, turn it on. It sells it more, it makes it look like it's actually going with it. So that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. So it's pretty easy just to kind of recap Make sure when you're filming, you have points that are easily trackable. You can do it without them, but it is easier with. Then you go into Mocha, you track it, you bring your info into After Effects, paste down to a null, and then parent your text to that null. If you liked this video, if you thought it was helpful, uh, you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more like it, leave me some comments and let me know what you're looking to learn.